Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. In this video, I'm going to show you a few commercial bits as well as this tap wash that I'll be changing. So it's a hand wash. So I have to isolate the supply. You can see that ball of fix there. Isolate the cold supply and then also isolate the electric. I've done that already and I'm going to take the unit out. I'm checking the order I've isolated the power that it, it is definitely off. It's good to double check. So in a very short space of time, I managed to change the unit. I would have preferred to use a press gun, but what I did is I just uh, decided to bend it rather than use loads of fittings. On another job, I'm carrying out a conditional report on two boilers to see their state, how old they are and so on. The boilers were looking out on overheat, especially the boiler on the right hand side. But I wanted to check their combustion as well to see how well they were performing. And the combustion was quite good. The efficiency was quite good as well. I checked the inside of the casing. Checked the seal. Also checking the wiring and also for any signs of leakage inside the boiler. One of the boilers did have some sign of leakage, but from a previous leak. So the difference between the flow and return was adequate on both boilers. I know that one was overheating, so I wanted to see how much temperature difference we had on the flow and the return. I was quite happy with that. But the boiler that seemed to be locking out a lot on overheat was the boiler on the right. Yeah, so the difference was about 8 Celsius on the boiler on the right hand side. This is just a look behind the unit at the gas valve. And here's a look on the inside. No movement on the flue. Looks like that flue could do with better sealing though. Then my analyzer started playing up. Whilst carrying out some tests, I was trying to dry it out. I think it's because I left it flat. The trap got filled up with fluid. I think this boiler on the right was from about 2008, and I believe the one on the left was from about 2013. So I believe actually the boiler on the right had some water damage to it rather than the boiler on the left. Moving on to another job, I'm in another plant room here and I'm carrying out some servicing on two boilers. So I'm just doing a little recce and checking the pipe work first, see if there's anything before I even get any tools out. Just trying to have an indication of what's going on in this plant room, what it's serving and so on. And this is the BMS panel. So I'm having a look at that, what lamp indicators are on and so on, if there are any faults before I start. And I'm having a look inside the control panel to see if anything has tripped and what the state of everything is before I crack on interesting to see what is inside the control panel so we need to get our boilers into high and low fire so i'm going to turn up the temperature first so that they stay on a little bit longer i remember i need to hit the enter button for it to log it so that it stays there yep that's done then i need to create a switch live to these boilers so i'm getting my pump ready Purging on my analyzer. Getting my test points ready as well. Always remember to put these back on. I know an engineer once that kept them in his mouth just to make sure that he didn't make the mistake of leaving it off. It's easy to happen. So I always double check. It doesn't hurt to check two or three times or make a habit of taking a picture. Let's have a look. Let's see if it's picking up any CO2. It's not picking up any CO2, I think. Got some problems it's still no readings from the analyzer okay i took it apart and had a look at the filter got the water out i do need some new filters this one is falling apart i think my analyzer is due for calibration soon within a couple of weeks but let's hope i've put this all back in the right way let's give it another go Let's get it onto high fire first. 
Okay, we're going to have to leave the boys in hand. And, and let's have a look now. Yes, we're getting some readings now. Do you have any trouble with your combustion analyzer from time to time? I've had all sorts of problems sometimes when they don't work in CO2 or the so the CO2 sensor doesn't work or the CO sensor doesn't work. And sometimes it tends to happen, especially when it's due for calibration <laughs> about a week or two before. So I've logged that reading on there. And I'm uh, moving on to this boiler, a minimum. Get to work in minimum. Give it a chance and look for the difference. Where's the difference? Have you seen a difference? Gonna have to log that reading soon. Are we stabilizing enough? Flu temperature 54C, 024%, excess air 25, ratio 0, 0, 0, 8. All right. Okay, now time to get boiler one into hand. Okay, boiler one, here we go. Get you ready. And remember to put a test point back onto boiler two. Very important that you don't forget that. Okay, we're out here now. Let's see what readings we're getting on boiler one. Are we getting good readings? Okay, are we in low and high fire? So there's our flow set point. Temperatures have dropped, which is good. All right, let's. I did turn the boilers off for a while to drop the temperatures. My battery's dying. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I swear I charged my analyzer, but I couldn't find a socket in here quick enough. There probably is one, but these temporary battery charges that I got online have helped. But I'm looking for a socket, but I don't see one anywhere. Sometimes there's one in the control panel. But I don't see one in this plant room. On my sheet, I do tend to like to write on one of my service sheets. I've put in there, look for sockets. Where's, where are the toilets? You know, the Billy Basics. But in this scenario here, I haven't looked for it first. Yeah, there's a socket down there. Hidden underneath the control panel. I didn't see that. But it's always good to carry a battery pack with you. One of these power banks. Because they can get you out of trouble. If you're in a plant room about any power. So this is inside the case of the boiler. Always good to take the case off. Sometimes engineers can get scolded for not even looking inside the case when they're carrying out servicing. Oh, that's the temperature. There's quite a temperature loss from the pipe work to the chlorifiers. You see over here, here's another gauge. I don't know if this gauge is accurate. And then you work your way around and then it, there's one chlorifier off, being isolated, and then you, and then after that chlorophyll that's been isolated, there's another chlorophyll here. And the readings I'm getting are quite low. I think it's about 40 Celsius or so it's reading on that chlorophyll. 40 Celsius on the secondary. This is underneath the boiler. This is the pump underneath. There's the gas pipe. Just giving it a little tug to see if it's got any movement. And there's a test point down there. Another little point to tap into there. Give the flu a shake. Look at the flu well. Touch and feel. Don't just look. Okay, thank you for joining me. Until next time. Bye-bye-bye.